Hi, I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. On this channel, we take photographs of outer space. Tonight, I'm going to photograph Ro Ophiuchi. It's a beautiful cloud complex full of all kinds of gorgeous colors. People typically photograph this with a 135 millimeter lens, but I don't have anything like that, so I'm going to take this nifty 50, throw it up on a Star Tracker, and see what we can come up with. Join us in today's episode of Walter Makes a Sandwich. <music> It is late April, so this time of year you can find Ro Ophiuchi in the south-southeast. It rises right before the Milky Way core. This time of year it's usually high enough in the sky to photograph at about 1.30 in the morning. You'll find it in the constellation of Scorpius. All you have to do is look at the bright orange looking star on Teres. And that's where you'll find Ro Ophiuchi. If you're coming from general photography into deep sky astrophotography, you may notice that the term wide has a completely different meaning in astrophotography. I got started in landscapes and nightscapes, so wide for me was 14, 24, 35 millimeters, and 250 to 300 millimeters was really zoomed in. That was telephoto. But then when you get into deep sky astrophotography and start looking at telescopes, you'll notice a 250 millimeter telescope advertised as wide. 135 to 180 millimeters is ultra wide. So in deep sky astrophotography, what would 50 millimeters be? Super, Super mega, mega ultra, ultra deluxe, deluxe batshit bat insane, insane wide. wide. I guess if you start using 14 to 24 millimeter lenses for deep sky astrophotography, you're just photographing a direction. What, what are you shooting, shooting tonight? tonight? East. But, but what, what in the, the east? east? All of it. My main telescope at 275 millimeters is way too zoomed in to get Ro Ophiuchi. I could only get a small portion of it. I've tried the Tamron 150 to 600 at 150 millimeters, and although that was an ideal focal length, the aperture on this is something like f5.6, so it did not let in enough light. The Nifty 50, on the other hand, does let in a large amount of light. With the wide open aperture of f1.8, it is a light gathering beast. And because it's, it's super, super mega, mega ultra, ultra deluxe, deluxe batshit bat insane, insane wide, wide, I can pick up all of Ro Ophiuchi and even some surrounding objects like part of the Milky Way core and the blue horse head. No, not the blues horse head. You, you know what, never mind. At f1.8, this lens can let in a ton of light, but usually the stars kind of look awful. So while I'm using a star tracker, I'm just going to stop my aperture down to probably f4. If you're not using a star tracker, it's worth giving it a shot at f1.8 or f2 or f2.8 with a high ISO. For my camera, I'm just using a cheap Canon T5i, no need for an astro-modified camera. Most of this target is reflection nebula, so you'll get some yellows and some blues. There is a bit of red emission nebula, so an astro-modified camera will help bring that out better, but it's not necessary. And since most of this is reflection nebula, I would not recommend using narrowband filters, so those of you who photograph in the city with narrowband filters, this may not be the target for you. You might wanna go out to a dark site. That's where you're gonna be able to photograph this the best. And for those of you who live way up north, my Canadian and UK friends, you might struggle a little bit with this one. Even here down in Mississippi, it's still fairly low close to the horizon. In some of my last videos, I showed you how I connect a camera with a small lens to a star tracker, just like you would connect a telescope instead of using a ball head. So I'm going to show you how I do that, and then we're going to go over my workflow. For my Star Trekker, I'll be using the iOptron Skyguider Pro with a counterweight kit so I can properly balance. Instead of using a ball head, I'm going to use the included dovetail clamp. I use this because it helps me reframe the target the exact same way over multiple nights in case I want to photograph the same target over multiple nights. In case you're wondering how to set that up, I take this piece right here, and you can see this the holes right here in the center, and you've got a long end and a short end. Well, I take this little round piece that came with the Star Tracker and I screwed it to the top of the long end. Then I took this round circular piece with these knobs that kind of look like ears and I screwed that on to the dovetail clamp that also came with everything. Once this piece is on here and these two pieces are attached together, I just put it on top like that and I can tighten down these knobs right here. Next, I'll take my counterweight rod this is not the one that came with the Star Trekker. This is a, an extension rod, actually, that I bought for around $30. But I like using this with lighter lenses because it's much smaller and lighter. Go ahead and take my counterweight, 
slide it on here and tighten it down and screw this onto the rest of the counterweight kit. And there we go, this is my counterweight kit for a very light lens setup like the Nifty 50. If I was to do a heavier lens, I'd want the dovetail to be on the shorter side, they would be reversed. It would look something more like this. This is for my heavier lenses, this is for my really light lenses. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this onto the front of the Star Tracker. Now I'm gonna take this long Arca Swiss plate and attach it to the bottom of my camera. Since I'm using an Arca Swiss plate instead of a Vixen dovetail, I went ahead and added this second tightening clamp to the dovetail plate. Because an Arca Swiss plate just isn't quite as wide and doesn't quite fit in here as well as a Vixen dovetail does. Basically, I took this uh, tightening bolt off right here, took it to the hardware store, and they found me a bolt that was matching thread and pretty much gave it to me for free. Now, when I add in the Arca Swiss plate, I can tighten it from both sides, and it gives me a good, firm, solid connection. Now I'll just slide the camera right on to the dovetail clamp and tighten both bolts. And there we go, the camera is attached to the star tracker. I'll loosen the clutch right here and let it fall to see if the camera is balanced. And as you can see, it is not. It's a little bit heavy on the counterweight side, so I'm going to loosen the counterweight and pull it closer to the camera. There we go, that's balanced. I'll also loosen the knobs on the declination piece. That was the little round piece that looked like it had two ears. And I'll point my camera kind of up in the direction that I'm gonna be shooting tonight, like this. And it's falling backwards, so that means it's back heavy. I'm gonna loosen the camera in this dovetail saddle, and since it's falling backwards, I'm gonna slide it forwards just a touch. All right, with the clutch loosened, I'm gonna point it up where I'm shooting tonight again and it's not falling in any direction, that's good and balanced. I'll start out by putting my Star Trekker on a tripod facing north, then I'll look directly over the top and just kind of move it around till the North Star is positioned right over the top of the tracker. Then I'll look on my app Polar Finder Pro and see where the North Star is gonna be in the reticle inside my polar scope. Turn the Star Tracker on, look through the polar scope and make adjustments on the tracker's base to get the North Star where it's supposed to be in the reticle. Next, I'll add my counterweight kit. Also use a red headlamp instead of white like I have here. I didn't even realize mine was on because of the bright video lights. Next, we add the camera. Once we've got the camera on, we'll go ahead and check for balance in both right ascension and declination. Once everything's put together in balance, I'm going to recheck my polar alignment. Sometimes I have to shine a red headlight through the polar scope to see the reticle on the inside. Now I'm going to connect my intervalometer, which is a little remote that's usually velcroed to the side of my tripod. Now that everything is set up and ready to go, I'm going to loosen my clutch and my declination bracket. I'm going to point my camera up to the star Antares in the constellation of Scorpius. Now it's time to dial in our manual camera settings. Shutter speed is bulb mode, aperture f4.0, and an ISO of 800. I'm also going to make sure my camera is saving my images as raw files instead of JPEGs. Now I'm going to switch on my live view and use the zoom buttons on the camera to zoom in to the star on Terry so I can focus. Once we're zoomed in and got it good and centered, I'm just going to turn my focus wheel until it's as small of a pinpoint as possible. This can be tedious, so definitely take your time on this. It's important. I'm going to set my intervalometer to take a three minute test shot. And here's a three minute test shot. Let's zoom in and make sure there's no star trails. It's looking good to me. I'm gonna set my intervalometer to take 70 photos, back to back to back. And then I'm just gonna go inside and relax for a while. Oh, it's 
5 a.m. It's time to take dark frames before the sun comes up. After I've finished taking all my light frames, I'm gonna come back outside and put my camera back into its home position. I'll put the lens cap on, keep all the camera settings exactly the same, and use my intervalometer to take 30 more shots with the lens cap. These are dark frames and they'll be used in stacking to remove noise. For the non-beginners out there, if you're wondering if I took flat frames, the answer is yes. This time I did, I used a white pillowcase and an illuminated sketch tracer pad. For the beginners, if you don't know what I'm talking about, flat frames are another type of calibration frame you take, but instead of removing noise like the dark frames, it removes vignetting and dust that might be on your lens or on your sensor. They're not always necessary, with some setups they are, but with the Nifty 50, it's, it's not so big of a deal. You don't have to have flat frames you can easily get rid of mild vignetting in Photoshop, Lightroom, or Cyril. So when I was done, I stacked all my frames in Deep Sky Stacker and did a little processing in both Pixinsight and Photoshop. And I came out with the first image of Ro Ofuyuki that I actually really like and I can't wait to show you. But before that, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. You guys are so amazing as always. Please give me a like and a subscribe if you haven't already subscribed because I really wanna see you next time. All right, everybody, stay spacey. Clear skies, watch out for snakes. Good night.